Hello friends, in this video we'll understand what is throttling and how throttling helps protect our application from downtime as a cloud design pattern. So friends, let's take a real life example to understand throttling. Suppose there is a marriage going on here and there, uh, there were 500 guests which were invited but due to some reason 1000 guests have arrived. Now what will happen? All the food supplies which have been kept, uh, you know, uh, would start getting exhausted very quickly because obviously all these 500 or 1000 guests will now start pouring in. So the first thing which you might try as a host is to reduce the amount of food you are putting on the table so that it could be retained for all the guests. Maybe as a second approach, you might say that I might want to restrict who is entering the venue. There might be some illegitimate people who are trying to barge in or trying to enter. So you might ask for some ID or some invitation card to validate whether these are genuine requests or not. Uh, another, you know, another thing could be that you ask everyone to queue up because when they are queuing up, they are not holding in front of the table and they are not just jumping on the food. You are trying to queue the request and you are trying to queue the guest so that everyone takes food in, in a queue. So all these kind of measures you will take so that the experience, the user experience is intact and there are no hassles. Similar thing is done through throttling because generally all your cloud applications from time and again will face a heavy you know, heavy loads from different parts of the geography, from different user bases. And the very first thing which we try doing whenever there's a load on our application is we try to either, you know, upscale or horizontally scale our application or we also uh, enable auto scaling. But even for auto scaling to work, there would be some time which will be needed. You cannot immediately auto scale an application if there is an influx of heavy load coming into your application right so in that window you will you will do throttling as a pattern which we'll discuss now to protect your users and your to protect your applications from completely collapsing so now let's understand how throttling works so let's keep that marriage example in picture and understand these different throttling techniques so the very first is rejecting requests so as soon as the system gets busier and if there uh, it crosses a certain threshold uh, the system would start rejecting the request. So it is as simple as that uh, because it has to retain uh, its performance. It has to retain its resources so that it could at least be available. The second is disable or degrade. So in your system, in your application, there would be certain features, uh, certain things which are not necessary. So for example, in your application, there are three features, A, B and C. Uh, a is very important, C is very important and B is not necessary, uh, it's less critical. And suppose all of a sudden uh, your feature C starts to take a lot of CPU, lot of memory and start breaking that threshold, then using throttling you could disable your service B which is not uh, essential at that point of time so that the rest of the resources could be shared with uh, the feature C and it could come down. Uh, as far as the uh, utilization is concerned and once it comes under the available or acceptable limit. Uh, then you could enable feature B. So that's one way of, uh, you know, disabling or degrading uh, your, uh, your request. Uh, the other is deferring. So you need to understand that, okay, if there are some requests coming at a very fast pace from a system, you could simply throw an error and tell that particular system that no, we cannot serve you at this point of time because you have increased, you have passed your quota of requests. In certain cloud environments, uh, in every cloud environment, there is an API request quota which is given to you based on your license. And if you cross that and if you exceed that, uh, you would get an error. So there, there is an example from my experience wherein we started facing these API failures requests from Google Cloud when there was a huge influx of requests on Google BigQuery. And the moment we crossed our quota, uh, we started getting these failures. So that's one way of protecting the environment for everyone because eventually, you are using a shared service. The fourth one is load leveling, which means that you try to level the load if it is a multi-tenant environment where you have multiple nodes serving multiple uh, customers or multiple geographies. And then you uh, combine it with queue based patterns. There are multiple patterns which are queue based and you try to uh, create a queue of requests which are coming in so that every tenant gets enough time to absorb those requests. This is a sample example of one such throttling technique wherein we have three different customers uh, trying to visit a booking website 
विद देयर ओन स्पेसिफिक डोमेन देर इज अ स्पेसिफिक डोमेन असाइन टू देम लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल बुकिंग्स डॉट एक्स वाई जी डॉट कॉम सो इफ यू सी वन टू थ्री क्लोज लीट हैज स्टार्टेड सेंडिंग टू हंड्रेड रिक्वेस्ट पर सेकेंड विच इज वे अबाउट द कोटा विच इज एलोकेटेड टू एवरी टेनेंट in a multi tenant environment because this is a multi tenant environment and that's why you know the throttling is happening here it is being denied the requests are started to get denied and the error is been thrown which is server is busy so that the server gets time to adjust and uh, reduce the uh, and until unless this is reduced to an acceptable limit these requests won't be accepted so this is uh, a way of uh, using throttling so now i think you have a fair understanding of how throttling is uh, another way of understanding throttling is you could combine it with auto scaling so as i said in the beginning even for auto scaling your environment you need certain amount of time right so during that time if you use throttling you can protect your system from a downtime and the moment uh, your system auto scales everything comes back to normal so that's also a way to combine throttling pattern with auto scaling pattern so that as a whole your system is performing uh, as per expectation but before using throttling we need to also uh, consider few things and understand few things before applying this pattern so let's discuss those as well guys with every pattern we need to understand the risk the issues and the considerations as well and same is the case with throttling so the very first consideration you have to make is that if you want to implement throttling it has to be an early design decision you cannot deploy an application in the production and then expect to implement throttling it has to be an early design decision made by your architect and so that you can understand how complex this would be in your particular scenario the second consideration is throttling needs to be quick whenever the system detects that okay certain requests are passing through the threshold of cpu and memory it has to be very quick in first of all identifying that and secondly making sure that the throttling throttling happens quickly and the system comes back to the normal and then throttling stops if it is not happening on time then it loses its purpose and that's why it has to be very quick and in, in order to enable this to happen very quickly you need to record a lot of performance data with you you need to have a lot of performance data to understand that what is the right time to throttle and to stop it the third one is you need to send a clear error message to the user in case you are deferring or denying a service they should be able to understand exactly what is the reason why they are being denied if they are uh, increasing their uh, rate limiting quota if they are sending too many api requests which are greater than their quota they need to know about it the fourth consideration is that if this load on your application is sudden um, momentarily and short lived then you might not need auto scaling at all throttling itself could you know take care of this but if it happens as a pattern over time then obviously you need to auto scale and the fifth and by far the most important point is even after applying throttling your system could go down and you need to accept that before applying this pattern there would be there could be scenarios where the application load is so much that even in the throttling mode the the application is not able to serve the customers and if that is the case for you you need to ensure there are reserves of resources available for that particular application in advance enough cpu enough memory enough disk and in that case you cannot completely rely on throttling to save you so yes if you consider these five keep these in your mind then throttling could be a good very good support system for your uh, operational efficiency and you could ensure that your system are almost available all the time so i hope you like this pattern if you like this cloud design pattern series guys let me know i'll keep on making these design pattern videos which are very helpful in identifying the possible solutions for our cloud problems so friends if you learned something from this video please give a thumbs up comment subscribe let me know what kind of design patterns you are using or you would want me to share my learning of that particular design pattern in this particular series so until next time guys keep learning keep sharing all your knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now